And now I'd like to turn to Andy Kim for his op center. Uh, Andy, uh, welcome. And thank you so much for doing this for us. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, let me get my, let's see, share screen. Okay, we're going to go over uh, traffic control on the railroad. We're not going to go in depth, but we're going to cover some of the more basic stuff, the, uh, the things that uh, either were very popular or they are popular today. Uh, and uh, we'll just give you an overview. Uh, at a later date, we can dive into these a little bit deeper uh, one at a time. So first of all is uh, railroad, uh, let me, do you see the thing up just above railroad traffic control? Is that showing up there? Yes. How do I get rid of that? I don't normally have that. Well, it's not showing up on mine. Oh, it's not? Okay. Well, it's, it's the bar that's usually at the bottom. For some reason, it's sitting up at the top. Well, good news is it's not being shown on... Uh, on YouTube, so. Okay, all right, good. Uh, so um, what we're going to talk about are the various ways of uh, controlling traffic through the years here. So um, let me just start through. Uh, the basics are uh, timetable train orders, which are pretty much done. Uh, there might be a few of those on uh, some of the smaller railroads, branch lines, you only have one or two trains and such. Uh, CTC, centralized traffic control, which is basically what they have today, just about all over. Uh, and along with that, they have uh, TWC, traffic warrant control, or direct traffic control. Uh, direct traffic control, you don't see as much. They're more out west, I understand. So timetable train orders, or TTTO. Uh, some people love them, and some people hate them. But... Uh, the, the operators uh, that really get into operation, they find timetable and train orders uh, very interesting, challenging, and a lot of fun. And uh, it's a good way to have your cornfield meets and that if you're not paying attention. So uh, the timetable uh, is uh, an employee timetable. Um, the real railroads had these and they update them on a regular basis. Uh, this one is Mike Dodds, Virginian, and um, is Virginian Railway. Uh, he created this timetable for uh, his railroad operations. And on the, um, the inside of that timetable, it gives you the, it's a little blocked here by the thing I've got up the top, but um, it gives you the information on this, the stations, on the routes, the um, westward and eastward, if you're following my cursor, and then the trains uh, that are on a schedule. So a timetable is only used for a scheduled train, of course. The other trains are not scheduled or called extras. And uh, that's where the uh, train orders come in. So the, uh, let's take uh, train number 77. Um, we can see up the top, this goes Danville to Pepper. So over three sub-districts, uh, Danville's at the top and uh, Pepper, well, Pepper's right here. Um, but you can see the train continues all the way through. So uh, it leaves Danville at 632. And one thing I should point out, westward, you read down. Uh, eastward, you read up. And then uh, you would do the same for um, North, uh, northward and southward, one will read down and one will read up. So the train leaves Danville at 639, or that's when uh, they can leave Danville at 639. And uh, Bradford, uh, it arrives at 652, or it cannot leave there before 652. So these are all, these times are the times they can leave, but they cannot leave uh, before that time. And if they're running late, then they just, they just uh, leave as soon as they're ready. And you can see that's all the way down through here. And then uh, train 78 is just the opposite. Starts down here at Hinton and it leaves at 631. And you can see the time all the way till it gets up here at Danville. So the next one is uh, well, first class passenger train. You've got classes 
you got first class uh, all the way through. You can have a fifth class if you uh, if the railroad wants or if you want. Depends how you break your trains down. So uh, in this this uh, uh, schedule, I have southwards. I've only got one class train on the southward. Northward, I have four trains, and you can see. The um, first class, uh, number five, uh, again, you read down and it leaves Bowling Green at 1.25 p.m. And you can see the times that it departs each of the stations or it cannot depart before those times uh, until it arrives at Nashville Union Pasture Station. And this time is set up for on my railroad. So you'll see the time isn't as isn't as long as it would be for real railroad. Um, also next to the, um, next that gives you the miles from Indianapolis. So these are mile posts. So across the railroad, you have these mile posts. And then uh, siding capacity, there's double track. And then it gives siding capacity for the sidings. And then back to double track. And this is just half the railroad. The other half's on the other side. Um, the symbols, the um, O is for uh, operator and R is a register station. And uh, we'll, I can cover the register station in a little bit here. Uh, so the uh, station ID, just a two letter identifier. And then the station and uh, the, the distance between each of these stations all the way down. If anybody's got any questions, feel free to, to jump in and ask as we're talking about it, um, however you would like to work it. Uh, Andy, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. You've got, you've got the distances between the two, uh, the, between the stations? Yes, right is, here. Is there a time connected with that? I mean, do you run it by time clock or? or well, how? what, yeah, what it is, um, the, the distance is the, uh, now I, I've got mine down to 12 uh, feet to the mile. Uh, the, it smiles, scale miles. Uh, and um, from that, I've got a distance and that gives me the, um, I set the, um, how do I want to put it? I, I take a speed that I want the train to travel at. And it should be able to go across the railroad, hitting each of these locations on time based on the uh, speed for this distance. So say 50 mile an hour, a passenger train goes across the railroad. So I would, I would set these, speed, these times up so he doesn't have to stop at each station and, and uh, wait till the time comes up. Does that make sense? Yes, I, I, that's what I wondered how you do it. Right. Yeah. And some of these stations have stops, you know, for the uh, pasture train, uh, depending on the pasture train, if it's a local or, you know, one of the uh, first class overnighters, uh, it, they're just going to stop at a couple of locations. Right. So, okay. Hey, Andy, right. I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. With, uh, when did they start using uh, train orders? Train orders were uh, one of the initial ways, or I should say it is the initial way that um, trains controlled uh, or railroads control their trains across the railroad. And one of the, one of the big problems, and this would be back in the 1800s, one of the big problems was, and I think, I'm not sure if we discussed it or not, I think we did, um, there, was, there was no time zones. So every town had its own 12 o'clock. So, uh, and, and that's when uh, the, the sun hit 12 o'clock high. And, and that was a real bugger for railroads because they worked off the clock and, and the clock was different at every town and that could cause some problems, uh, cause head on collisions uh, and, and other uh, problems. So um, the government created the time zones uh, for the railroads and um, they were able to operate within a zone, the, the Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific uh, on one, one clock time, which you know makes sense is gonna be a lot safer. So, but I can't, I, I mean, I could look it up, but I can't give you right offhand when the uh, you know, train orders started, but they were very, very early. 
uh, I would say they preceded uh, the Civil War. Um, okay. uh, so what did they used to use before train orders? Well, that's what I'm not sure of. I think it was probably uh, some kind of combination of, um, of written orders. Uh, but maybe back then you only had a train going in each direction, uh, you know, one train going each direction on some of these early railroads. And uh, maybe uh, the eastbound train uh, didn't depart until the westbound arrived. Uh, I, I'm just not sure. I'm, I'm no expert when it comes to the really early days. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. And, and they did use, uh, you know, telegraph um, uh, to, to, um, get all these orders back and forth between stations. It was way before the telephone. Um, if I may. Yes. Um, originally, there was no such thing as train orders. There was just the published schedule. And train got where it got. And at some point, after the telegraph, um, I forget the exact railroad, but uh, there was a person that a, a superintendent, the train the he waited and waited and waited. And so he telegraphed the next station and said, is the train there? They said, no. He said, hold it till I get there. And he did this for like five or six stations. The train was several hours late and they had no way to tell anybody else because they weren't using officially the telegraph. And that got implemented probably pretty quickly. And then uh, the time thing you talked about, um, President's uh, Conference on Time wasn't about the U.S. president, but all the railroad presidents that were fed up with it. And they're the ones that made the proposal and... Uh, it was, uh, before it was government, it was just the railroads that followed it. And uh, the railroad time and the town time might be, uh, well, probably an hour apart some places. Because, you know, the, the time zones are a lot bigger than the sun uh, arc, uh, as far as when it's high noon. But eventually, the government said, no, we're all going to do this. Hmm. Um, yeah. That makes well, I sense. Think that wasn't until after the Civil War. Okay. okay. I think. Uh, yeah, and I, I'd just be guessing, TC. I, I just don't know. Yeah, well, I, I'm going off of memory from articles I've read. So I'm definitely not the horse's mouth. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I, I've been sometimes called the opposite end of that, but uh, yeah. I try my best. <laughs> Okay, train orders. Train orders are for the extra trains that aren't on the schedule. And um, this again is Mike Dodd's Virginian, just basic desk uh, with a speaker. And um, he can use, uh, I, I'm not sure if they're radios. I think he has telephones uh, around the layout. So um, he would write train orders for his, uh, for the, uh, the trains, the crews and give them the information on uh, what they needed to get their train across the, across the railroad. So here you see a register, uh, the dispatcher's, uh, I'm sorry, the dispatcher's train sheet. And this is where he keeps up with all the, um, the trains and where they're at uh, across the railroad. Okay, this is uh, uh, my uh, dispatcher's desk. And um, this sheet you can see is a fairly, fairly good size one. And we've actually, this is just half the railroad. Got another sheet the same size for the uh, south half the railroad. And this, uh, this would be the opposite, either the north or it, it would be the other sheet anyways. And so each of these columns is a train or would be a train. So he puts the information of the train at the top portion. And then these are all the towns like I showed you on the timetable. And he would mark the train starts here and it ends here. And as it goes by each of these stations, the, um, the station operator uh, and 
since we don't have a station operator at every station, it's the crew would act as the station operator as they go by. They would call the dispatcher on the, on the uh, telephone and he would talk to them uh, and uh, they would give them the information uh, on their train passing and the time and uh, he would write it down on this. So let me go a little further. Okay, now this is a station operator. Dispatcher uh, sits uh, wherever he's located and he has telephones out to all the station operators across the railroad that he works with. And this station operator um, is uh, the dispatchers dictating the train order to him, that's the yellow sheet. And then this is a clearance form, a clearance card they sometimes call it, it's clearance A. And I'll show you a close up of that after, but the, the clearance card, uh, every train that goes on, on uh, the, the dispatcher's tracks has to have a clearance, whether they're uh, an extra train or um, a uh, scheduled train. And again, we're talking about uh, timetable train orders now, not, not necessarily uh, today's railroad. So um, the, the station operator would fill these forms out based on what the uh, dispatcher tells them. He'd verify it was correct with the dispatcher. And then uh, they would, this is what they would hoop up to the train as the train goes by or hoop it up to the crew. And that would give them their orders and tell them uh, exactly what they have to do, how far they can go uh, clearance wise. So here's the clearance uh, form A. And basically it's to the uh, conductor and engineer extra, extra 7055 North. And uh, they're talking just to the locomotive here, the, the, the locomotive crew. They, they, it's not a train yet. And the train's at Gresham. And uh, they, they sign the time and the dispatchers and the operator's initials. And then uh, you go to uh, the, um, the actual train order. It's a train order number 21. So every order dispatcher puts out, there's a number here and it'll go, uh, you know, 21 through 30, 35, however many he writes. This is a form 19, which is a standard form uh, that they use most of the time. And this is to C&E engine 7055, uh, it would be seven not five five railroad parlance. Uh, they didn't say zero, they said not at Gresham, uh, engine 7055 run extra Gresham to Bowling Green. And that makes it a train and he's cleared to um, Bowling Green from Gresham. So that, that will get him to his, um, his uh, final, his terminal. Uh, but he has to watch along the way, every uh, station he goes by that has train orders uh, or train order signal he could get a red signal or a board and stop and get updated uh, uh, information uh, orders. So that's how you get the trains across the railroad with timetable train orders. Any question? Uh, yes, uh, I'm assuming this is also for uh, maintenance away equipment, like no. a ferry rail service or something like that. Yes, anything on dispatcher's track, uh, you know, the control track, um, they have to have uh, clearance to get on it and they have to have their orders to tell them what they can, you know, they can do. So they, and again, we're talking back, back in the day. Um, what, what they would do is if you had maintenance people that are gonna be working uh, in a certain uh, uh, area, uh, maybe several miles between two towns, the dispatcher might give them that track uh, and uh, for so much time. So he will not allow another train to go through there and, and uh, possibly create, you know, create a, um, a conflict between the trains or worse. And um, when they're cleared from that, then the dispatcher would open it back up for, for the other trains. So there's, there's all different ways uh, these orders can be written. Form 19 is the standard, but there's all kinds of different form numbers. I can't come up with them right now, but, but it's basically, it's the, same, it's the same form that you're using, that yellow pad. 
but the information and the way you put it on there in the order is what changes the form number. And, and that, you know, being a military background and, and also a government background, uh, I had a lot of trouble because a form to me was a specific piece of paper with specific information on it. And if you uh, got a form of a different number, you went and found a different piece of paper that was uh, formed up in a different way. So it took me a while to understand exactly what they talked about uh, on in you know the, on the railroad uh, on the rule book when they're talking about forms for the train orders. Does that does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. You Another question. Yes, sir. Does the train order tell what kind of train it is, or a rough you know existence of you know what's put together? No, no, the train order only uh, allows the train to get on the dispatcher's track and, and go where the dispatcher told me could go. He's going to know more about that train, more than likely. But uh, as far as the order goes, it's just telling the crew what they can do. Okay. All right, now we're getting... Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, we're getting into uh, CTC. This is a little blurry, this picture, but this is Lee Nichols. Uh, he's got a fantastic railroad. You, some of you are probably a lot more aware of it than I am. I've just seen it in video and in magazines. Uh, but this is a, a really nice CTC panel, a real one uh, that Lee has uh, that uh, he run, uh, operates his uh, railroad with. In CTC, centralized traffic control, the dispatcher controls all the signals and um, all the uh, switches in that. So he gets a train across the railroad by giving them um, the clearances through the, through the signals. And he can put one in the siding to pass another one and, and such. So it makes it a lot easier for the crew. The crew gets on their train and uh, they just go. And the, when the signal is green or yellow or you know, a specific type of signal allows them to proceed, then, then they just uh, do that. And they can go right across the railroad using that. They might be put in a siding and uh, my, uh, my dog is playing with me here. Okay, stay down. Um, they might be put in a siding for a couple of hours for one reason or another, uh, but that will, uh, you know, that will get them across the railroad. So, and here's a uh, gentleman uh, using um, Lee's uh, CTC panel during an op. And you can see he's got the form there. He still keeps track of the trains going across the railroad. He, he, um, it's not as important as it is for a dispatcher uh, in dark territory using, uh, dark territory is uh, no signals. That's where you're operating strictly on, um, uh, tri timetable train orders. Uh, when I say no, say uh, uh, dark territory could be ABS signals. If I'm incorrect, uh, someone correct me. Um, but ABS, it just lets you know the track ahead of you is clear, but it's not um, a clearance uh, like CTC. Uh, it doesn't mean you're cleared to go down that track unless you've got orders telling you you're clear to go down that track. But, but the signals there would tell you that the, um, the track ahead of you is clear. If it's red, then you don't want to proceed. You'd want to sit there. There's probably something coming at you. Andy, what does ABS stand for? Oh, I'm sorry. Absolute um, block signals. Thank you. And what that means, the railroad's broken up. Uh, my dog just found something noisy. I might have to grab it from. Automatic block signals. Uh, 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 okay, what did I say? Absolute. It's automatic. I'm sorry. Thank you. Let me get this with my dog. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, automatic block signals. And and it, the railroad is broken up into blocks, and those signals let you know what's ahead of you. Uh, depending on the signal you get, the next two, next three blocks might be clear, or you're clear in the next block, but the block after uh, you you won't be able to go into because uh, there's traffic in there. I'm, I'm not really up on the, on ABS and I, I really don't have a desire to use ABS on my railroad. I'm going to go with the CTC across the, the double track main uh, in the city. So it'll be CTC and dark, dark ter pure dark territory with, uh, with no signals. Any questions? 
Yeah, I do. I Again, with the signals. So if you're going with the CTC, do you get a warning signal and a block prior? Or do you have to see the signal and then get the train stopped? How does that work? Well, they've got they've got intermediate signals, uh, and they've got uh, right here is a, a control point. So you'd have further back behind us would have been uh, an intermediate signal. Uh, it would be telling you what to expect when you get up here. So it's it's kind of like does the same thing as a block, uh, but but it's working around all these control points. So anywhere there's a switch or an area where they want to control the train from one track to another uh, and such, um, they would use um, the, the approach, uh, the intermediate signals, the approach signals, and the home signal, um, whether there's always those three for all these control points, or, uh, I'm not quite sure, but they would indicate to you what to expect. So you would be slowing the train and you'd be ready to stop it if it had to be stopped. So it's not like you're like in an automobile, all of a sudden you got a yellow and you think it's going to go red and you got to hit the brakes really fast. So the control point here, the dispatcher controls the signals and he also controls the, uh, the switch. So if they're going to put you in that siding where you see those cars down there, you would know with the signal back behind you that you're going to be placed on that siding. And the signals will give you all those indications and then the switch would be lined for the, the siding. Okay, interlocking. Interlocking is, is kind of like a, um, a small CTC area if you want. It doesn't, it doesn't work exactly the same way, but it, it's, um, uh, we'll show you a couple of pictures here, might make a little more sense. Uh, but interlocking signal permits movement within the limits of the interlocking plant. And we can talk about that a little bit more in one of the pictures. As the name implies, interlocking are arrangements of signals. Uh, they're designed uh, so there's no conflict um, in, in, in the area that they want to get you through. So they, they can uh, get you, move you through the interlocking. They have the switches all set. They have the signals all set. And um, you shouldn't have any problems going through there if all that works correctly. Uh, interlocking may be manual or automatic, and uh, today it's a lot more automatic, but um, manual, you've, you've seen all those big Armstrong switches up in the towers that the switch operator has to, um, or tower operator has to line the switches with, and you see all the rods that go out to the switches. I'm not sure if I have a picture of that or not, which I probably should have added one. Um, so automatic interlockings are most common at remote areas. So uh, those are areas of crossings of two different railroads and such. So here's an interlocking. Um, just to show you all from, from this point right here to somewhere over in this point, I, exactly where I'm not sure, but they control all the switches and the signals through here. And they will take a train, if a train has to go a number track number two here on the left side, and you bring them up here to track number two, then they'll line the switches and the signals to get that train to that point. So just because you've got the signal and the switches, if you've not been given clearance to get through that interlocking, because you'll still get, you'll have these uh, back with the old uh, train orders and um, uh, timetable type stuff, uh, the, it would be the train orders. If your order doesn't give you clearance to go through Hicksville, then just because you come up here at your clearance limit and they line everything up for you, you, you don't proceed until you've got a clearance to do so. Uh, and in other words, another train order. I hope that makes sense. In other words, these signals don't give you the right to go through. They're just letting you know everything's lined up so you can go through. Okay, this one here. Now, I was looking at this. I think this locomotive is Photoshopped. And the reason I'm seeing that, all these signals are red. This one's green. This switch is lined up to come this way. And that back there is green and that's green. So this track is all lined up for a train to come from here all the way through there. And uh, I, I just don't see where that locomotive uh, fits 
fits there with, with that indication. However, uh, this is uh, Chicago, the, the main station downtown. Um, and this is the, uh, the, the switch tower and they control all the blocks or I should say all the switches through here and all the signals. And you can see there's more further back behind the camera. So that would be an interlocking. Okay, here's another one, uh, switch tower, interlocking tower. And you see, this is a little more simple. Um, they probably control this switch here. And it looks like there's one down there for this siding. So they control all that uh, and um, the other thing, you don't see it here, so I don't think this is a, um, a tower operator with, uh, you know, for, for train orders and such, but you could see uh, one of them could have it. There's no signal here for it, but if you had an a, a order board, train order board, or uh, a signal, lighted signal, he could uh, take the um, train orders and hoop them up to the train's coming through here if they, uh, if this was their clearance limit or if they had new orders for the, uh, the crew. Okay, track warrant. Uh, track warrant is something, and this again this is Joe Fugat's uh, Siskiyou line. Track warrant is being used a lot more now. And basically uh, via radio, the dispatcher will talk directly to the train crew and will tell them what to check and what boxes to check and what to put in each of these areas. So when the uh, crew gets through uh, filling that out, they'll repeat it back to the dispatcher. And if it's all correct, he'll, he'll tell them it's correct. And uh, they'll sign off on it. And then that is, those are his orders to get to wherever his clearance limit is. And uh, it, it's a lot like the uh, train orders uh, of old but it's a lot quicker and cleaner. And it's, it's just dispatcher direct to the train. Okay, track warrant control authorizes the dispatcher to verbally instruct the train to proceed, usually via radio. Dispatcher selects the stations or mile posts between which the train may move. Uh, and train crew writes the instructions on a track warrant. Now, uh, direct traffic control, uh, you don't see as many railroads using it now, I understand. Uh, it's um, used more uh, out in the West. Uh, CNO or CSX did use it. Whether they're still using it, I'm not sure from what I was reading a little, uh, little while ago. But direct traffic control is similar in execution to the tra uh, traffic warrant uh, control, but the um, they, they have the railroad broken into blocks. So maybe from town A to town B would be one block and then town C is three blocks. Keeping it simple, you could use anything, uh, junctions or whatever, a mile post. And the dispatcher uh, gives them uh, authority uh, for each block. So they, they say it, it's a little more cumbersome uh, he can't be so specific on uh, what he gives them, but uh, it's, it's something that uh, they can do and it's fairly quick, especially if you figure out west where you've got a lot of just open desert area, uh, no towns to speak of. Uh, that would work pretty good for some of those railroads if they're not CTC. So yard limits, okay, yard limits, a lot of people misunderstand yard limits. Um, yard limits only are only in effect uh, for uh, mainline dispatchers track. Uh, we're not talking about a yard and we're not talking about sidings and that, you know, industrial sidings, that kind of thing. So um, yard limit uh, can be placed on the mainline in certain areas and, uh, when it is, uh, then the train has to travel uh, at a speed which it can stop in time for any kind of conflict that might come up. Uh, they've used the term um, uh, half the distance, uh, half the, uh, the distance that you can see. You, you have to be able to stop within that. Um, so as you can see, trains would be fairly slow also using this. 
But um, the yard limits, uh, say you have a town with a yard and the uh, main line goes right, right through the yard or by the yard where uh, some of the local traffic has to go back and forth across the main. If, if it's yard limits, then uh, they can just go back and forth with no problem, uh, you know, crossing the main, using a piece of the main within the yard limits. If the um, yard limits, um, let's see, how do I want to put this? If, if the only time the yard limit is um, a, a mainline track where you have to have, um, have to be off of it is if you have a first class train, like a passenger train going through first class then you have to be clear of it. Any other time you can use it and any other class train has to be ready to stop for you. So um, the, again, the yard limits only affects uh, mainline uh, track, dispatchers uh, control track. And uh, one of the uh, things that I'm using yard limits for is uh, the main line between the two major yards on my railroad, one in the north end of town, one south end of town, and uh, it's yard limits between those two. And that way uh, the transfers and uh, the other uh, trains can just run back and forth without having to go through the train orders and all. Later when we get CTC, then we'll use CTC to control those trains. Um, so yard limits authorize any train to move at speed that allows it to avoid conflict. Uh, this is a railroad equivalent to um, aviation's VFR visual flight rule. Yard master may direct yard movement, uh, but does not provide movement authority on, uh, through the yard limits. Trains and engines must still watch out for each other. And yard limits can apply beyond the yard, such as on branch lines where speeds are slow and trains meet, train meets are rare. So I've got one branch line that we're going to make the whole thing yard limits. And that way he doesn't have to have orders written. And uh, he just operates uh, at a speed uh, that he can stop within uh, a sure clear distance if uh, he sees another train. And normally it'd just be one train on that branch line. Okay, and that's, uh, that's it. That's the end. Uh, I, again, I didn't try to cover everything in in depth because I'm no expert on a lot of this stuff. Uh, from a modeling point of view, um, I feel I have a fairly good understanding of it so I can um, uh, run my uh, railroad in a, in a, uh, oh, I, a realistic uh, operation and not tie the crews down so much that they, they're afraid to operate. So we keep it kind of light. Um, if any of you have any, any um, thoughts on anything I said that's incorrect, please uh, correct me. Yeah, I don't want people walking away with the wrong idea. So anybody? I think you're good to go, Andy. Okay, Jim. Well, I hope I didn't confuse everybody. Not at all. I think it's interesting, very, very interesting for me. Okay. And I'm sure for a lot of us, you know, a lot of us hear about operation, but a lot of us uh, don't really, you know, abide by operation. Uh, we, right. run our, we just run our trains. And uh, that, that's why I'm so happy that you agreed to do this because you're bringing a perspective uh, to the show that I, that I think is really important. So thank you so very much. Okay, thank you, Jim. Now I'd like